Brilliant. Um, putting this sort of this session into context, into the into the European framework, um, the Amersfoort Agenda in 2015, I think it was now, 14, um, set out various themes of, of, of um, work and investigations across Europe. And theme two was one that was called Dare to Choose. So it's developing a sound infrastructure to support making of informed choices. Um, out of that, there was a, a working group established called the Making Cho Choices Working Group. And they undertook a survey in, I think it was 16, 17, 2016, 17. And this report came out in March 2018. Um, and Barney Sloan of Historic England was involved in, probably people here, I think, Bill, thank you. <laughs> and um, so that's really good. Um, again, this report's really interesting, and this is really framing a lot of our thinking and how this session can sort of work towards it and contribute to it. I'm just going to go through a couple of the sort of the high level um, bits of that. So the report had 22 responses from across Europe, which uh, it was a very good outcome. Of those, that 15 out of 22 required some sort of written proposal or project design. So this was like sort of the fundamental basic. So an investigation, whether it was part of development led or academic, it was that sort of idea of having a project design. So some sort of informed idea of uh, research objects, aims, objectives. Um, when it came down to asking the question on which state had research frameworks, four states said they had national frameworks. I don't actually, haven't actually had access to the details of the survey. Barney's going to send that to me. But of those four, I know that the Netherlands have one. Inga? Yes. Correct. Scotland has one. Belgium, Flanders, I think is one. The other fourth one, I wasn't sure. So I will find out, but I think maybe one of the outcomes of this session will be to sort of try and contribute to that list. And then three other states have some sort of research framework. England, we have loads. We don't have a national one in terms of national, we have a different aspect. Um, Ireland has different World Heritage Site ones and, and sort of proto ones as well. And again, the third one I wasn't sure about, but hopefully we'll have the, uh, the details of that survey. Um, just quickly in England, we have lots. World Heritage Sites, regional, five national thematic ones. These cover things from the Mesolithic to the extractive industries. Um, maritime, industrial, and then lots of counties, local authorities, towns have some sort of research framework, some sort of research agenda. All very different, but it's, it's like a variety of different types that set things out. Um, some of the others that we know we've picked up that weren't part of that survey, so that map I showed, Wales has a, a national research framework. Ireland has an island strategy that is developing something called the FARI, or they're looking to look at that. So they've got that, the intention of looking at it. Uh, and then France also has the National Framework of Archaeological Research. This is the beauty of one of these, uh, of conferences like this, you bump into uh, French colleagues and they tell you all about it. It's quite difficult to find information sometimes. Um, so the French one is it has a, a national programme, it's by the CNRA, and very similar, it has 15 axes of research. These are period, and cross-cutting thematic. So it's the sort of information we've, we've been looking at. Um, one of the interesting ones is these are sort of national, they have uh, very much sort of national bodies and heritage bodies have these national frameworks, whereas you have the impact of different political and administrative systems. A classic example, uh, two examples is Germany and Spain, where they're very much federal or autonomous regions. And so they don't have this sort of national overview. They do possibly have some sort of uh, regional, it's organised regionally, but whether they actually have regional frameworks or regional uh, um, agendas is something to look into. Um, Matilde and I, we looked at the case in Spain, so three of the autonomous regions, um, Galicia, uh, Andalusia and Valencia, um, and looking at what do they have in terms of everything like that. And it's quite interesting is that all of these have their own regulative frameworks. They have their own um, regulations and laws and things that they have to responsibility for archaeology that's undertaken in those regions. All have set out annual funding plans, but it's literally, this is a pot of money, this is what we have. The priorities could be for some state-owned uh, monuments and things. 
that, so they have that, but none of them have any type of research framework or agenda, so there's not looking at that sort of area. Um, but all of them, Paul, thank you, Ned, all of them require project designs for investigations. Um, and when these come down to, for example, if a development-led investigation is undertaken, they have to send the project design to the administration and they are looked at and checked and they have to have research aims and objectives. But where those research aims and objectives come from is purely down to local municipal um, uh, um, uh, curators. And talking to some of them in, in the province of Alicante, that is purely down to in the head of that curator. So nothing is actually written down in terms of a plan for their town or priorities or anything like that. Um, where this fits in, and this sort of work and this whole session really, is the recommendations from the EAC report, um, which is, it, it's an interesting one. It's the sort of the four pillars, I think, that I, I certainly would be looking at in, in, in England um, in terms of the articulation assessment of significance, which we've been looking at for a long time now. Uh, very important for, for this session is the developing national research frameworks including setting out guidance for how to create a national framework or probably a, a framework of some sort. Um, and then it's that making the case for the value of development-led archaeology and then that whole tricky thing of managing archives and actually what do you do with all the material um, documentation that comes out of the archives. So I think for a lot of people these are very sort of cornerstones of everything we do, but it's interesting to see that it's in the EAC. Um, and then the last slide in my allotted time, which I'm pleased about, <laughs> is this can, um, speaking to Barney Sloan before this conference, uh, he's attending the, I think it's in Warsaw, the national, the, the next EAC meeting, and uh, he's very welcome to take some of the, uh, some information from this session. So it would be really nice to see how some of the ideas and some of the things from this session can actually contribute to, to that working group. So we'll see what happens, but I think it is nice to try and have some outcome from this in different ways, which we'll talk about later. Okay.